All right guys, today we're gonna be taking a look at replacing our factory RV water pump with this brand new water pump. So without further ado, let's get going. Hey guys, my name's James. And I'm Ashley. Last year we sold our house and we're traveling across the country with our kids. Hi, my name's Goose and this is Maverick. <laughs> Come join us. So for those of you that have been watching us for a few years or more, you know that we've had pump issues in the past and I've just hacked MacGyvered things where I've gone in there and flipped switches and primed the pump, etc. and I've made it work, but I am tired of dealing with that. I have to say this is probably our longest ongoing issue that I just haven't done a complete fix for. I've just kind of hacked it. So today we're going to rectify that. We've got a brand new pump that we're installing, but first we got to clear out our underpass because the pump is currently living behind this wall. Thankfully, it is very easy to get to. We only have a couple screws we have to remove, and then we can just kind of fold this wall back. So, let's start unloading. This is the hose I use for uh, pumping water in when we're boondocking. We're currently in a boondocking spot, so I was just uh, pumping probably about 50 gallons from this barrel that I had behind you here that I attached this to. So uh, I have to feed this through that little hole before we can take off the wall. Like I said, super easy, just two of these little tiny square screws. But I'm very excited because recently my uh, previous drill broke, so I just got this brand new set of uh, hard tools, which I am very excited. I love, I know it's a nerdy thing, but I've said for years, I love my technology to be white, so uh, I also love my tools to be white. It just looks super cool. Anyways, two screws taken out. And then we can just kind of fold this back. Come around. Now I know this looks like insane in here uh, as far as the amount of wires and pipes and things running around. Just a little more, a little more light. Spider webs even. Sorry, I didn't catch that. Try tapping above to edit. Man, she's always bugging in my business. Anyway, so here's the uh, the hose I was talking about that I use for pumping in water, which actually comes into this T-valve right here. But thankfully, I was able to find the exact same pump as the one we have here, which comes with these quick release valves. So today's install is gonna be super easy, but I am gonna walk you through some of the basics of an RV pump, so that way if you have an older pump without these quick release valves, you should know what you're doing by the end of this. You have your positive and your neutral. So as long as you've killed your pump, your pump switch up above, then there should be no power running to these bad boys right here. So you don't have to worry about going and shutting off your master kill switch if you don't want to. If you want to be extra safe, you can do that. But since my family is inside, I'm not gonna turn off the lights on them. So these are our two wires that we're gonna to have to cut and reattach. And then we have our simple water in and water outlines right here on the pump that we will easily just replace. There are also four screws, one, two, three, four, two on either side of the pump that mount the pump to the floor. For any of you that have ever traveled in an RV or been in an RV, you know that when you turn on that water pump, it can vibrate the entire house. And when you're sleeping or your kids are sleeping more importantly, that can be a horrible thing. So what I've done is I've bought these little tiny pads that are actually designed to go underneath furniture to keep things from scuffing your floor that will work perfectly to have one pad underneath each one of these screws. So I should be able to mount that in there in between the rubber legs that come with this pump and then those rubber pads, I'm hoping that we will be able to eliminate all of that vibration. So uh, the things I'm going to do is take off those four screws, cut the positive and the neutral, and unhook the in and the out of the water. And that should completely free up the pump to remove the old and then do the opposite with the new. Does that make sense? So step one, I'm going to try and reuse these clamps here to be able to reattach. So I'm just gonna squeeze these and unbend, which should then, boom, release the positive, which positive is blue, so I can remember that. Blue is positive. Do the same thing here. Just unclamp it. Negative is solid white. So positive blue, 
negative solid white. So now that these are released, I'm actually gonna save these and reuse these little caps. Let's unhook our quick release. So this is our water in right here. I know it's kind of hard to see, but there's just this little blue lever right here. All we have to do is pull on it. There we go, and it clicks out. And then I should be able to just pull my water out. Now the problem is, is there's some water in here. All right, so one thing you wanna be aware of is you don't make the same mistake I did here is you'll wanna have a little cup for all of your excess water that's in your lines. It's not being pumped out because obviously we're removing the pump, but just anything that's in these lines is gonna drain out and you don't wanna get a ton of water inside your rig. All right, so there is our in that's unhooked. And this, like I said earlier, this is the line where I can suck in the water like when we're boondocking. So there's this little uh, valve down here that I actually just closed to help eliminate some of that water flow. All right, so we got that removed. Now we gotta do the same thing to the out and I guarantee we'll have the same issue over here. Yep, water flowing out of here. But I got my towel. Perfect, thank you. So make sure you have either a cup to catch the water in or some towels to dry it off, or both, probably. Now all we gotta do is remove the four screws. Come on, doing this blind back here. There we go, one more. There it is. And there it is, there is our old water pump, complete with water. So, like I showed you in there, we just have our positive and our neutral. Then we had our line in and our line out that we just connected. And then each one of these feet had a screw going through it. Just a little guy like this running through each one. So it's really easy to install or to remove. So one of the differences you might run into with your pump is you might not have these nice quick release things right here. Now, thankfully, most of the pumps you buy, like this one I bought, comes with replacement parts. So you should be able to clamp on the proper female or male in, depending on what your pump looks like. But the overall process is exactly the same. You disconnect your in and your out, your positive and your neutral, and your feet that you have attached, and then you reattach them with your new fittings. You might have to buy an adapter depending on what kind of pump you get or if maybe your rig is really old. But if you can, I suggest trying to do what I did and buying a, uh, a pump that has the exact same kind of attachment here because then that will make your life just that much easier. You can simply pop it off and pop it on or screw it off, screw it on, depending on what kind of attachment your pump has. But that's the removal of the old one. Now let's put in the new one gonna wipe this down with my wet rags and clean it out a bit in here because it's kind of gross. This was my in, that is my out right there, and then this is my positive and my neutral right there, and then the pump's gonna go right there. So you might be able to tell a little better. This is the angle from outside the rig. All right, uh, this is an honesty moment. Your pump will probably come with little plugs like this. I just tried to shove my <laughs> pipe in before removing the plug. Make sure you remove those or you'll struggle like I just did for the past 30 seconds. All right. And now look how smoothly that clicks in. Boom. So that clicks into place. Remove the plug from the other side. And then this side goes in. Boom, all right, and we have dribbled a little bit more, so I'm gonna clean up down here. And we're gonna put my little sticky pads. The great thing is, is I don't need the sticky, but before I screw it in, it'll help keep them in place. One. <laughs> but 
But since I am doing that, the little tiny screws that came with it are just not gonna cut it. So I'm going to increase to these little one and a half inch screws. That way not only will it penetrate through the hole in the pump and through the rubber pad, but it will grip tightly into the plywood underneath. So that is something that I did have to buy on top of it, is four little wood screws. And by buy, I mean dig through my toolbox to find four old wood screws that were the right size. So you know, either way. Now that we have all four feet attached, we're gonna hook up our positive. Now, if you weren't able to reuse these, you might have had to snip it and then clear off and then strip some of the wire. But since we were able to just pop it off, we don't have to do any stripping, which is great. Let's put that up in there and then squeeze it back down. go and just to be safe I am gonna also do some electrical tape just to keep this since we are reusing it keep that cap from sliding off and potentially causing any issues so there's our positive we'll do our neutral So that's it, we have our water in here, our water out on the other side. We've got all four feet attached with our bonus rubber pads to help with uh, vibration. We got our positive and our neutral line reattached. So now the only thing left to do is to go inside, flip on the pump and test out and see if it works. All right, moment of truth. Oh, look at that. Stopped much faster than the previous one. The previous pump would always take a few seconds, if not forever, to try and turn off. That one instantly turns off. So that tells me we are good to go. Everything seems to be working fine. I will say my little rubber pads did not silence it as much as I thought it would. So maybe I'll try loosening the screws in the feet to see if uh, that is just too clamped down and maybe that's reducing the amount of vibration that the rubber could uh, absorb. So I'll try a couple little things. If you guys have any tips on how you potentially reduce the vibration on your pump, let me know down below in the comments. Plus, I know everybody watching this video would love to find out if you had a better way of doing so. But there it is, the removal of an old pump and installation of a brand new pump in an RV. If you have any questions or suggestions on other videos you'd like to see, let me know down below. But until next time, guys, remember, stay positive, get out there life is an adventure so make some memories the only difference you might have with your pump is you might not have these quick release tabs oh we just got water got water on the lens <laughs> you do what you gotta do for yeah yeah stuff. for the free stuff that's right all this look at this that's so great and these guys I was supposed to go get the hand trolley, but I didn't. I went and got the camera instead. Let's get it loaded up. Anything from the trolley, dears? <laughs>